Hey, what's up guys? Sir Amanon here and welcome to another feature match commentary on the channel today. So this is actually going to be the top cut of my online Discord tournament. I actually have fallen a little bit behind in the feature matches, so I made the decision to just skip the rest of Swiss here because a lot of the matches in rounds 5 and 6 were either just not very interesting or were going to be repeats that you would have seen in Top Cut anyways. So I figured I might as well get all these out before the next tournament in Blazing Vortex just so we have them out there. And speaking of which, if you guys do want to play in that next tournament, definitely go ahead and check out the link to the Discord server in the description box or in the description box down below as per usual. And if you also want to see these players' deck lists, uh, they will be down there as well. So uh, definitely be sure to uh, join the server and feel free to chat with us. But we are going to go ahead and feature a top 8 match between Sedindo on Karakuri Synchro, who uh, we actually saw earlier, uh, versus uh, GLT BXST underscore 10, or White Devil, on uh, Virtual World. And if you guys do want to see just the uh, top 8 decks, uh, here they are, as well as the players piloting them. Uh, probably the most interesting spots are 5 through 7, <laughs> because those are some very fascinating decks. And we will be seeing uh, all of these in action, because I do plan on um, you know featuring all the top cut here. So I actually haven't watched any of these yet, by the way, so it should be pretty interesting. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. Talked for quite a bit, so we are going to see, it looks like Karakuri actually winning the RPS. Going to choose to go first here, and then the opening hand for Karakuri is going to be Despot 1, Saizan, Cockadoodledoo, or aka Chicken, uh, Despot 3, and Tuning. So this hand has a lot of gas. Um, you know, this is one of the best starters, if not the best starter in the deck. I feel, as well as just a lot of ways to get tuner bodies onto the field. So very, very nice. And then the VW hand is going to be Chinglong, Itali, Lulu, Meister, Ash. So two hand traps. Uh, will it be enough to stop the combo? Not sure, but uh, the rest of the hand looking pretty good. He's going to activate tuning to start off with, and that's going to search for a copy of Quick Draw Synchron, and then mill a, uh, what is it, Shiro Kanishi, I already forgot its name. Uh, but yeah, this is the one that lets you change battle positions by banishing from Graveyard. So it lets you trigger your Buredo for a draw, or your Burebu for a banish, I believe. If I remember the names correctly. Um, but he's going to special out Chicken, and then Normal Summon Despot 3. Use that effect, that's going to get Ashed. I think that's fair enough, because he's getting to Fiber regardless. And like if you don't Ash the Despot 3, but Ash the Fiber, he'll have Despot 1. So just make a run on anyways. I think this way it prevents two copies of Despot 1 from hitting the board, so you can Skullmeister one of them. I think that's his thought process, so I think that's fair. Maybe it's worth saving for like the um, Aurorodon effect to summon from deck, but we've also seen that sometimes he doesn't even need this to combo, or need to use that effect, so it's really up in the air. I don't know when the best, hand, or best time to use your hand traps on are against this deck, to be perfectly honest. I've only seen a couple matches with this, and in this tournament. <laughs> uh, we're going to see those linked away for a copy of Fiber. And then Fiber Effect is going to summon out. There's a Despot 1 here. And then out comes the Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. That's going to summon out 3 tokens. And then will we see the Meister on the Despot 1 is a question. It looks like the answer is yes. And it also looks like they're not talking in chat. Um, so they're probably just in voice call right now. So let's see what will happen next. He is thinking for a good while here. Uh, Aurorodon going to be used next. That's going to... Tribute two tokens and then summon out Coltwing from deck. And then Coltwing on summon is going to trigger. That's going to summon out two level three tokens. And then the Despot one comes back. So he's going to synchro two level threes and level one tuner into a Beret. So this lets you summon a card carry from deck upon synchro summon. All the synchros let you do that. So he's going to be picking the Nadishi. And this one is the one that lets you uh, grant another normal summon for a card carry. So you can actually use it on the size end here. And he's going to do that, so he's going to then synchro away for, what is this, 4 plus 7, does he play level 11, or 11 synchro? Because this was a level 7 because of its effect, where is it, uh, this card's level, yeah, has increased. So I do wonder if he's playing level 11 synchros here. Uh, maybe he's realizing that uh, he can't do that. Oh, just kidding. Oh, oh, maybe he just forgot. Hopefully they catch this, because this Beredo is uh, not supposed to be here right now. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, looks like they did catch it. Good. <laughs> yeah, because this is not level 4. So he's going to use the level 3 token instead to make just another copy of Beret. This works. 7. Yeah, 3, 4. That works. Uh, so Beret effect is going to summon out another Shiro Kanishi, it looks like. And then going to synchro away the Beret and the Shiro Kanishi into a Beredo. So yeah, he got there anyways. All good. And then Beredo is going to summon a Shinkuro, it looks like. 
and then the beret is going to switch the Shinkura to defense, and then the Beredo is going to draw one, so it's going to draw the Seizank. And then he's going to Synchro into a copy of Berebu, and then Berebu effect is going to summon out another copy of Shinkuro. And then he's going to Synchro for... Oh, just kidding. Um... Oh, we're going back. Well, they are talking in voice chat, so I can't really see exactly the context, but I mean, maybe he's just letting him take back his play. Which is fair. Uh, so he's going to summon the Inashichi instead, which lets you on normal summon add a card, create a card. Yeah. So, oh, I see, because this is a non-tuner, so that matters if you want to make like, another um, Berebu or something. Yeah, so he's going to go for that. And then the Berebu effect is going to summon. Now it's going to go for the Shinkuro. So just missed sequenced a little bit, but it's all good. His opponent was cool with it, apparently. Obviously, because uh, <laughs> let it go through. But VFD hits the board, so VFD through um, through two hand traps is pretty much all you can ask for, right? He didn't even have to use his quick draw. Uh, for turn, we're gonna see a top deck Ash. Uh, you know, not really gonna, not really would have done anything. This is probably just gonna be the end of the game. Uh, VFD gonna be calling wind. Uh, so what I do do actually is uh, I reveal all the players' decks for top cut, um, just because it's something that I modeled off of uh, both the uh, RCS for Reddit, and also, more importantly, the uh, Konami uh, pages. They usually actually, when they list the top cut standings on their website, they have all their players' deck lists revealed anyway. Not deck lists, but their um, archetypes revealed anyways. So I figured that I might as well just mimic that. So the players know the matchup. But Calling Wind, obviously going to be really good. Yeah, and that's just going to be the end of game one here. So Karakuri taking it 1-0 to zero so far. Um, you know, very fun dragon, but it gets the job done, I suppose. Uh, so moving on to game two, we're going to be seeing Virtual World go first. If you guys are enjoying this video, definitely be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new here and want to see more commentary similar to this style. Uh, let's try and shoot for 7k by the end of the month. But the opening hand is going to be Gigi, uh, Ash Blossom, Nyan Nyan, Chuche, and D-Barrier for Virtual World. So this hand is good enough to combo, depending on how he gets interrupted. So let's see what the... Uh, Karakuri hand is going to be. So it's Valencia, which is going to be pretty big already. Uh, heavy forward, anchor drill, the uh, Inashichi, and the tuning as well. So this will cut off Qinglong, which definitely matters. He's not going to be able to end on anything that good because he definitely needs that Qinglong search here. Um, but yeah, he has like a Rota for infinite tracks, and the infinite tracks allow you to just tutor out for um, you know other earth machines, which the Karakuris happen to be. Um, for example, anchor drill, it's a marauding captain. Yeah, this hand looks pretty good. Uh, main phase is going to normal summon Nian and then use Gigi to target it. And then he's going to send Qinglong. And then Resolution, he's going to drop Lancia. This kind of plays into Triple Tactics Talent, um, but shotgunning it also plays into uh, Cypher Gear Gamma. But then not, shotgun or not shotgunning it also can lose the Desires. Well, not lose to but like, your opponent can just use Desires. So it's very like tricky as far as like when to use Lancia against this deck. Uh, it just depends on what you're trying to play around specifically. Uh, he's going to overlay for Fortune Tune. Yeah, we see this a lot in VW now, uh, just because it helps make Zeus. Um, but yeah, I guess it's a decent enough wall. I feel like most players probably would have gone for like the Gossip Shadow instead, or yeah, that probably would be the only other option I could think of. Uh, but I mean, he's very, very much cut off from his resources through Delancia. So he's going to set two and pass. For turn, we're going to see a top deck Nanishi, so lots of ways to just get bodies on the field. Uh, although kind of some conflicting normal summons. Unless he has a way to special this one out, then that's pretty good. Uh, heavy forward, that's going to be Ashed. Uh, and then he's going to summon the Anchor Drill anyways, and then use that to bring out the Nanishi. So yeah, uh, he could now bring out the Inashichi as well. Uh, so he's going to use an additional normal summon on that, and that gets a trigger now to add a card, carry card. So we'll see if that's, there's actually any spells and traps in this deck. It looks like there's not. <laughs> it's just going to be the monster lineup, which is fair. Going to add Seizank off of that. And then, I guess this opponent just asked to read it. Uh, tuning going to be next. That's going to search for Quick Draw. And then mill a Earth True King. All right, well, I mean, it's a free uh, level 9 body, I guess. It helps make VFT. Uh, so he can already go into Fiber, which is quite nice. Uh, he's going to... Oh, Synchro straight up into Nappy. So his opponent actually had D-Barrier. And I bet he was probably planning on calling Synchro like once uh, you know he committed to the Aurora Online. But uh, Nappy is a pretty interesting one. I'm not really sure what spells he's trying to play around, because the only ones I could think of are like maybe Call by the Grave and maybe like Forbidden Droplet. 
But I mean, Droplet wouldn't be, or Nabis wouldn't be great against Droplet anyways. So I don't know. Kind of interesting to go for this right away. Uh, but he's going to pitch the Seizing to go for a quick draw Synchron, and then he's going to go into Fiber. Fiber Effect is going to summon out to the Despot 1. Yeah, maybe Call by the Grave for the Despot 1 is like why he went for this, which is fair. And then he's going to go for Aurorodon, and then Aurorodon's going to trigger to summon three tokens, and then Despot 1's going to come back. Definitely here you use Deep Barrier. Yeah, Calling Synchro, have to for sure. And then Battle Phase, going to attack for or with the Aurorodon over the Fortune Tune. And then Nat Beast is going to attack. And then the Despot 1 going to attack. And then main phase 2, the Aurorodon going to tribute the token to pop the set Chuche. And then that's going to be a pass. So VW not out of it yet because he has a chain long engrave. He has to draw quite well for this. He's going to draw a Kowloon. I mean, that's dead because of Nat Beast, but I mean, he's going to be pitch fodder for the, the Chu, or the, sorry, not the Chu Jay, the Qinglong, anyways. So, main phase one, going to use Qinglong, that's going to search for Gigi. And then, going to pitch Kowloon. So, you can, like, normal special. Not really sure what you go into from here. Uh, normal Gigi, special Nian. And then he's going to, because, like, Coral Dragon doesn't do anything here. Oh, he's gonna use Chuche to raise, right? So he can go. He like go for a million, I guess, to pop. Yeah, I'm gonna like, go for a million, banish Ash, pop like Despot One, and then attack over the Aurorodon, maybe. Because you have to get rid of this for sure, and you also want to get rid of Despot One so that they can't go in like any just random uh, synchros or like another copy of Fiber. So they're both threats. Kind of hard to say what's the best play here. Alright, okay, so he's going to go into Shenzhen instead. So maybe he's just going to banish the Despot 1. Which is fair. Oh, he's going to battle phase. Oh, he's going to attack over Roradon instead. Uh, I guess this does out the Shenzhen. But at the same time, he wouldn't have any Tuner Axis. Although maybe he's afraid of Axis Code. That's another thing. Yeah. It's kind of hard because like... Shenzhen by, or by itself doesn't really clear the board. So he's going to pass here, and he's going to draw a Despot 3. Okay, so it didn't even matter, because uh, we know he plays multiple Despot 1s already. We saw that in the previous game. Uh, so, yeah, it wouldn't have even mattered if he went for the play that I went for, or what I would have considered going for. I mean, this is definitely better for the grind game, uh, like if he's planning on trying to survive, because uh, it is a VW name if you like top deck more VWs, which you kind of have to bank on, honestly. So, uh, yeah, that's fair. I think it was a losing position no matter what, though, honestly. Uh, so he's going to go into Beret, and then Beret Effect. That's going to summon out Shinkuro. And then going to Synchro away for a Berebu. A Berebu Effect is going to summon a copy of the Saizan. And then Normal Summon Despot 3, that's going to summon out Despot 1. And then he's going to Synchro into another copy of Beret. A Beret Effect, that's going to summon a copy of the Shurikanishi. And then the Beret going to switch it to defense, and then the Beret be banish, and then... up. Oh, he kind of misclicked there, I think. So this is going to be for each machine, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is on 25, so this is game on board right here. I was going to sink real way into the Beredo. Uh, Beredo effect going to summon out the Shirakanishi. And then go to battle phase, so... That is going to be a 2-0 victory for Karakuri, actually, over VW. Uh, very, very good stuff. I'll just let this fast forward, I guess, if they want to like show off their stuff. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's it. <laughs> but that's pretty interesting to see this deck. Uh, just, you know, are you going to outpace VW? Uh, game one, obviously, was just full combo. Uh, game two came down to, of course, just the hand not being able to play through the Lancia. Um, and yeah, the Ash and Heavy Forward maybe was too early. Not sure, though. I mean, stopping the access to starters could be a good idea. It, it just depends on, like, how consistent the deck ends up being to finding its starters, but it seemed to be able to find its starters quite frequently because they have like, you know, three Despot, three, and then you have just like a lot of tuner access. Um, like the Inferno Track plus Earth, or Earth Machine tuner works, and then like tuning, Cockadoodle Doo or Extenders. Uh, so feels like it's kind of hard to stop uh, this deck as far as just getting the engine rolling.
But anyways, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comments. Subscribe for more informative and competitive video content. If you want to, you can follow me on all social media platforms or support me via Patreon TCG Player. All the links in the description as usual. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.